Hello Watch Enthusiasts and welcome to Watch Chronicler. Regular viewers will remember Watch Chronicler coverage of watches from the brand Arage and the development of the most financially accessible Swiss tourbillon ever made. Since that video, an awful lot has changed as a consequence of originally negative events, but which have resulted in a movement which was impressive, but which has now become utterly unique. In today's video, I'd like to address why this is a break with the traditional conventions of the watch industry and a brilliant story of, if you want something done, do it yourself. Before I begin, I would like to make clear that following interest between both parties last year, this video is a collaboration between Arage and Watch Chronicler. Nonetheless, as I explain the story, you'll see that I would have been a fool not to cover this story anyway. So what's happened? Well, just under a year ago, Arage announced that they wanted to produce a limited run Swiss tourbillon for a price never before seen as a statement of what they were capable of. This was a price around 7,000 Swiss francs, at least 4,000 less than the nearest Swiss alternative. Now at the time, this idea sat rather well with me, as it seemed a well-needed wake-up call for an industry which sometimes hides behind words like tourbillon to mask a lack of innovation. Don't get me wrong, there's an awful lot of incredible work taking place in the Swiss watch industry, but there's also a considerable amount of obfuscation where innovation and its costs are concerned. Since then, Arage's plans have changed following the rather sudden pullout of Le Jouperie, a company specialising in the production of high horology but serially designed movements. For this movement, amongst other things, Arage were going to use their silicon escapement technology to increase the power reserve of the existing movement. Now at this point, Arage were left with two choices. Cancel the project, or use their existing technology to produce the rest of a movement suitable for the Tourbillon 1. Now I don't want to overly praise Arage, but kudos to them for undertaking such a project, given that they hadn't planned to do so in the first place. Producing a brand new movement isn't easy, but a tourbillon is another level for a brand of this size. Moreover, after speaking to them, I'm entirely confident that they're going to pull off the task. To understand the choice to go out and produce a tourbillon movement from scratch, you really have to understand the way this brand works. When I visited the family home, office and factory from which Arage operates, I saw something very different. This wasn't the ornate press facade or workshop proclaiming history and tradition. Instead, I was met with a hearty meal cooked and served to the watchmakers and engineers of the brand in the family home of the owners. Over lunch, we were able to talk about watchmaking, the local area and our enjoyment of food. Yet, once we'd all finished and cleared up, all returned to their posts with CAD files or tools to continue design, development and production. Surely this is a modern equivalent of classical watchmaking. If you're enjoying this video, please like, share and subscribe, it really helps. If you want to enjoy the most from Watch Chronicler, head over to our website, watchchronicler.com, to read full articles and to listen to our weekly podcast. Also remember to follow us on Instagram to catch all the latest updates about the watch industry and about our recent productions exploring fields as varied as watches in 1950s aviation or in the depths of the sea in the 1960s. Returning to the tourbillon, another reason why I have the utmost confidence in the project is the group of people personally invested. Perhaps the best example is Florian Zarex. Prior to working with Arage, Florian worked as an operational director for La Jouperie, and before that as CEO of Vouchy. This is a seriously experienced engineer and watchmaker, as well as someone who would know whether a project was worth pursuing. I think that this CV describes the team working on the tourbillon very effectively. So if that's all well and good, what does this mean for the movement? Well, it means that the Tourbillon 1 project can now enjoy pretty much complete freedom. Stepping back, the principle for this watch hasn't changed. It remains much more of a quietly intelligent watch than one aiming for a highly technical appearance like, say, a Richard Mille, or the more classical piece, such as a Breguet. Instead, it fits in with the rest of the Arage range as a contemporary, restrained, and mechanically centred design. The dimensions also remain the same at 41mm across in 904 stainless steel or 18 karat gold. Of course, it may not be for everyone where styling is concerned, but it certainly is honest about what it is, and is very keen to show its mechanism. Even so, whilst the styling may be similar, it does seem clear that Arage have taken the opportunity to refine the product. Firstly, and most obviously, Arage have considered the very function of the tourbillon, enhanced accuracy. When patented in 1801 by Abraham Louis Brigue, the tourbillon was a functional invention to offset the constant gravitational pull in one direction acting on the balance wheel of a pocket watch. In a wristwatch, though infinitely less pronounced, the effect does also improve accuracy to some extent. 
Consequently, I'm glad that Arash have chosen to add a second indicator to the 1 minute tourbillon to give you that chronometer function. Another visible change is that the cutout base plate now gives a better view of the transfer of energy from the spring to the tourbillon and to the hands. Given the inclusion of a tourbillon and a semi-skeletonized dial, the focal point is inevitably the movement. Bearing in mind that I'll be talking about just how this movement works in upcoming videos, the previous iteration of this tourbillon shared much of its gear train with the Velger 7750. Sturdy and reliable? Yes. But suitable for a watch like this? Perhaps not. Instead, all of this will now be done in-house, and so any small issues seen in the previous version can be ironed out. A key change, for instance, is that the power reserve can now be 100 hours, and the titanium tourbillon cage can accommodate the weighted balance wheel from their very own K1 movement. Oh, and by the way, the cage only weighs 0.29 grams. Let's put this all into perspective. This remains a watch with visual interest, considerable quality, and this is the crucial bit, the resources and experience behind it to be usable and serviceable for years to come. Oh, and let's not forget the price. What seems most striking to me about this project is how different the philosophy here seems to be to much of the watch industry. There are some really very funny stories from the history of movement development. Take for example the Calibre 11, the first Swiss modular automatic chronograph movement from 1969, produced by a group of different brands. It's believed that the different parts of the project were buried in such a soup of secrecy and bureaucracy that the crown was built into the wrong side of the movement through misunderstanding, not the original design. Whilst this is comprehensively different to the development of most watches today, there is often a whiff of the same complications. From what I've seen, Arage couldn't be more different. If you ask a question, you really can expect a direct answer. On that note, I'll be reporting back over the next few months about further developments and changes to the Tourbillon 1, including a technical tour of the movement and an in-depth comparison between this and more expensive competitors. Trust me, there's a lot to look forward to. For today though, I'll conclude the video there. Tell me what you think in the comment section below, and I'm sure that Arage will have answers for any questions. If you enjoyed today's video, remember to like, share and subscribe to catch more here soon. Thank you very much for watching. This is Armon from WatchChronicle.com. Out.